Hey there, welcome back for another review. Today's review is this here bad boy, a Ghoul RC T6 quadcopter. Um, it says high performance waterproof quadcopter, 2.4 gigahertz, 6 axis gyro. Um, it's a four channel. Um, so, yep, there's the box. A uh, little handle on the top. Um, some more sort of guff, uh, high performance waterproof again, age 14 plus. Um, gives some sort of pictures here and gives a little sort of product breakdown here so non-rechargeable battery is not to be recharged well it's a good bit of advice only batteries of the same or equivalent type as recommended blah 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 batteries 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 exhausted batteries okay the supply terminals are not to be short circuited that's a bit obvious do not mix old new batteries blah 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 just a lot of guff about batteries um, and uh, it says that this the tick signifies that this is a silver model. It's also available in red. Um, yeah, so one of the things that I find a wee bit strange, although it's just a bit of randomness, is it gives the knots here, and one of the knots is don't get it wet, um, which it's a waterproof drone. So, um, yeah, it's a bit strange. Anyway, that's the box. It's not actually in the box because I've been using it quite a lot. Um, just go through some of the features then. It says uh, 2.4 gigahertz, 4 channel, 360 aversion. Uh, LED lights, six axis gyro, headless mode, return to home, altitude hold, and waterproof. Okay, so um, here is the actual quadcopter. Okay, so as you can see, it's um, nifty little size. It's it's not sort of micro level. Um, it's bigger than that. There, um, if I put it down to my little measuring table from corner to corner, so from motor to motor is seventeen centimeters. Um, and 17 centimeters across, so it's an X configuration, sort of split out into a bit of an H, but anyway. Okay, so before we get on to this, we'll just get onto the box. The reason why it's not in the box, uh, all this here, guff came, so it, it was well packaged. Um, and then the controller was in there. The reason why it's not in that is because I've already put the skids onto it, as you can see, and it doesn't fit back in the box with the skids on. And I can't be bothered taking the screws out, to be honest, um, to put them back on again. So, uh, before we get on that, so this here is the documentation that comes with it. Um, we have two um, of the same things, pretty much, and just in split languages. Excuse me. So there we have uh, Ock Tongue. So we have some German. Uh, we have Chinese and English in this one here. And it gives you the functionality. Blah, blah, blah. You can read it if you wish. Um, it gives you the modes. Um for the actual stick, excuse my hand, was painting. Um, uh, yeah, so if you want, give us here a read. Um, the English is pretty good in it. A um, little bit broken, but you know, it's very, very readable. Um, yeah, so uh, it gives us here a bit about the headless mode and the altitude hold. So, uh, and then the back, it gives us some of the uh, specifications of the actual spare parts, which is pretty, pretty nice touch. Okay, so in the box, we get this here quadcopter. We get these skids which are separate and need screwed on with four little screws. We get a bag of screws here which contain all the screws we need. In the bag also we get these little prop guards um, which if you're new to uh, flying drones you might want to put them on. Uh, I'll just sort of show you how they go on. I never use them. Um, and It's not because I have a sort of death wish or that I have enough money to buy thousands of props. One, I don't really crash that much. And these here aren't very heavy, so usually when you crash, if you're sort of on a soft surface, they don't really do much damage if you kill the throttle. And these here are little wind catchers. Um, these here are little light drones. Now, I've had quite a few of these little light drones. And, you know, any breeze at all restricts their use. Uh, and the last thing, I usually don't use the skids, but um, the last thing you want is sort of more drag. So these here fit on the bottom like that. Um, and there's a little screw that goes into there, uh, and that's them in place. Um, just like that there, so they uh, protect the props uh, if you come down and land like that there, okay? Um, I don't use them, you may use them if you're new to flying these drones, or any drones, then you might want to put them on. Um, but I pre prefer not to, just because it makes them a little more resilient in the wind. Okay, so also, as well as that, we get this here, which is quite a nice uh, transmitter. Um, Sometimes you get to be micro transmitters, which are a bit crap. These ones here have actual uh, sticks that you can hold on to. Um, they're made out of plastic, but there's little sort of little raised ridge top on it where you can grip. Um, an actual nice feature is uh, this here little hook pin. But anyway, we'll get on this here later. 
You also get two sets of spare props, uh, which is quite nice. So you have the set that's on it and two spare sets, which is pretty good. Uh, you get a little screwdriver included, um, which isn't magnetized for uh, screwing them on. And then we get this here, little um, charger. So the battery, uh, which is here, which is a little 400 milliamp bar, 3.7 volts. So it's a one cell battery. Uh, that there plugs in um, to this here, and then that there plugs into either your PC or plugs into a standard charger. Now, just be careful because if you have a fast charger, uh, you know, like a, my phone is a, an S7 edge, so it, it takes a higher, it charges at a higher amperage. So just be careful and use sort of a normal one amp charger for this here, like you would get from your PC. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it that comes in the box. Um, so we'll just start with this here. So first impressions, I really, really like this here. I've flown it quite a bit indoors. I've flown it a bit today outdoors. And part two of this review will be a bit of flight footage. So apologize in advance this is going to be quite a long one quite a long review but i didn't want to skip anything uh, i wanted to cover all the bases in this here and give you as uh, comprehensive a review as possible so forgive me if you just want to see it flying if you skip through to sort of halfway through the video um you should get to the flight footage so anyway we'll get on to this little drone so firstly weight now this this is minus the battery but including the skids so obviously um it'll be slightly different uh It'll be sort of buttons more if you do. Uh, come on. There we go. Uh, so if you do put the actual guards on, it'll be a bit more. But without the guards, with the skids, and without a battery, it is 64.37 grams. Okay. So it's quite light. Uh, there's that'll never work again. Anyway. Um, yeah, it is plastic. Uh, underneath, we have uh, the little LEDs for orientation. And we have a little LED in the front, um, which also helps. Underneath then we have this little hatch in the back, which is the battery compartment. Um, so we have, if I can just hook this out. We have the little terminal um, that you plug the battery into. Now this little hatch isn't removable, it's quite nice. Um, you have the on off switch. And then we also here have a little camera port. Now the two models that are available don't seem to have a camera. I may in a later video try and see if I can get a, a standard VTX, like a FPV camera hooked into that so I need to check to see there's three pins I just need to check to see which one is the positive and negative um, and possibly then we can uh, run an FPV camera that's for another video okay so this here is a little brushed quadcopter okay so there's no ASCs um, and the motors which are in here are stepped down sorry there's the motor sorry and it's stepped down through this here cog um, one of the things I liked about this here over some of the other cheap ones, quite a lot of them use like a brass or sort of metal um, smaller co cog on the a gear on the actual um, motor, but they use a plastic larger. And what I usually find is then um, the stronger metal gear strips the plastic. I do find that a sort of plastic to plastic or nylon to nylon, whatever, whatever the gears are, um, do sort of hold up better um, because one of them is much, much stronger than the other one. So... Uh, yeah, so they're pretty good. Uh, now I've ran these motors in and I've probably done about uh, 20 minutes of flight time with this here and uh, there's no sign of wear. I've had a couple of crashes. There's no sign of wear or damage actually for that matter um, from this here. So uh, the props that are supplied are actually surprisingly good. Um, they just screw onto the top. Balance wise, you know, you're not gonna be taking any video from this here. So really, you don't really need to, to sort of worry about the balance. However, um, since we're doing it comprehensively, um, I have a little prop balancer, which I've managed to get these props onto. And, you know, out of the box, they're not that bad. Um, they're, they're slightly off, but, I mean, uh, because there's no weight in the props whatsoever, they're not that bad. This one here is probably the worst one, and it still doesn't really warrant uh, me uh, shaving any off or trying to balance the prop out. So uh, if you don't have one of these here, by the way, this is a little prop balancer. Um, if you don't have one of them, it's it's a must if you're doing any sort of aerial videography. But, anyway, they're, they're cheap as chips. They're a couple of quid. It doesn't come in the kit. But uh, it's a very, very handy way to um, see uh, where your props are on balance. So anyway, yeah, that's pretty handy. Okay, so uh, as I said, they're screwed on. The props are on it there. Um, geared, um, the battery, onto the battery. So the battery, as I said, there is a 3.7 um, volt, 400 milliamp. Now, I tested this here with one of these here. This here is a USB voltage and current uh, meter type of thing, if you want to call it that. Now, if, you, if you've never came across these before, how these work, um, 
this this here end would plug into a uh, wall socket, uh, like a, a phone charger. Uh, I'm going to use, just for the sake of this here video, I'm going to use a uh, power bank. So this here plugs into the power bank, okay? It gives you a voltage that the power bank's given out. That's not important. Uh, what is important though is that we can use this here little device to measure the actual milliamp. So we can use it to measure the actual capacity. So if you run this here flat, uh, we then get our little USB uh, charger, which is here. We plug this in as normal, and then we plug this in, in series into the side of it, okay? And this little red indicator um, switches off when the battery's fully charged. So what we'll see over time, we'll see the milliamps counting up, and what that is a rep representation of, there's one now, that is the amount of milliamps that have flowed from your power supply. So this could be the wall socket, that could be your PC, USB port, or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, flows through there and charges the battery. So whatever this figure ends up with is the capacity of your battery, okay? Um, and this here, three, 0 0.37 is the rate at which it's actually charging the battery, okay? Um, very, very handy little device to have uh, to, tech, to check the actual capacity of your batteries versus what's stated. For instance, this power bank uh, was sent to me and it was allegedly a 10,000 milliamp bar power bank. Uh, it tested at about 4,700, so it was literally half the capacity. Okay, so the battery's good. The actual capacity of the battery, if it's on my board here, was 386 milliamps um, out of a stated 400, which if you've ever used sort of, you know, LiPo batteries or lithium ion batteries, that's pretty close, you know, that's pretty close to the full uh, capacity that's stated in the battery. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, flying time with it, uh, I got about um, five and a half minutes. It was quite windy, so once you turn the rates up on it, uh, the motors are having to work harder and uh, the sort of the, the battery time went down to about maybe four four and a half minutes okay so on to the transmitter so this here is our, our radio control 2.4 gigahertz radio controller okay really nice for such a cheap quad um these here little dials here don't do anything they're just for show but they look quite nice we have our trims on it here up and down and left and right and this here is our uh, throttle trim um, and then we have this here's mode two so we have our throttle on the left and our control stick on the right. Uh, it has a little um, antenna, it has these two buttons in the top. This one here changes your rates. If you're not familiar with rates, the higher the rate, up to 100, um, the more sort of sporty and agile the aircraft will be. So the lower the rate, the more stable it will be. So if you're new to flying, you can turn this down to sort of 50% and it'll be quite docile in the air. Um, if you want to make it a bit more sporty and increase the yaw rate and increase the sort of the tilt at which it moves and makes it go faster um, Flick this up to 100% this one here is for doing flips So uh, if you watch part 2 the video shows you more about this, but basically to flip um, You push this button and it starts the controller starts beeping and then whichever direction you push next So it can be left right up or down and um, the quad will flip uh, in that direction automatically and then the gyro will stabilize it back out um, and you can do sort of automatic flips. I haven't actually tried to do manual flips yet, but um, you know, it, it's quite difficult in something so small and light. Um, nice wee carry handle, um, pretty pretty heavy, you know, um, I'm not gonna bother weighing it. It takes AA batteries, I put Duracell in here. Uh, the little slide cover fits on quite well. Um, there is a little screw provided in the little screw container to put in there, I don't know if you'd need it. Um, so yeah, pretty good. So what we'll do is we'll hook the battery in and I'll just show you how to bind the little um, quad. So this here just hooks in and then we feed this into the battery compartment, which is pretty tight, but just as big as it needs to be. Um, there we go. And the battery cover clicks closed. And then we just switch this, the switch to the on button and you can see the LED starts flashing, okay, on the front. So what we do is we put it in the correct orientation still flashing we turn our, tr our transmitter on here um, to bind it we put the controller up until it beeps and back down again and that is it bound okay so if I just hold this and you can see there that's it now bound okay and it'll throttle and it'll move about so that's us ready to fly um, when this is on I'll just turn this off for a second so that I can show you some of the functionality so when this here is on um, we can see that it gives us the trim so by moving the trim up and down, we can change that there actually switches on the video in this one here. So um, there is no throttle trim. Sorry, I haven't actually tried that because there is no video and uh, I didn't really need to trim the throttle. So up and down then turns the camera on and turns it off and takes a photograph um, if you have that model, which I don't. 
Um, it gives you a signal strength indicator here, which is quite a nice feature. Um, and then it also gives you a uh, battery indicator there. Um, our standard trims here then, you can see when you move it in one direction, um, it increases our trim, makes a large beat noise whenever it's in the center. Um, so when you take off, you can trim it um, to suit so that it, it's stable if there's no wind. Um, it has these nice little raised bits to hold on to. It is actually a quite a comfortable little controller to hold. I actually prefer to hold mine like that because you get more control over the sticks, I find. But this here little bit, it doesn't come with an X strap, but you can buy an X strap for about a pound. Took it around your neck and you could uh, actually sort of fly it more like you would fly a, uh, you know, like a 220 type drone or a racing drone. So as I said before, these here just look good. They don't actually serve any purpose. Um, and I haven't taken it apart. I'll do that in a little second to see if there is actually an antenna in there. Um, for range test, if you watch the video in part two, you'll see the sort of range it gets and how sporty it is. Um, that's about it, yeah. Overall, my opinion, brilliant little drone to learn with. Brilliant little drone for the money. Um, yeah, it is, it's cheap as chips and uh, it performs excellently in the wind. You do have to turn the rates up. So this here button here, when you push it, it's a, it says 75%. You can turn it up to 100 and it goes down to 50%. Okay, so 50% is docile, 75 is middle of the road, and then 100 is sort of sporty mode, okay? And then this button here, we push that button and then when you turn it, the quadcopter flips that side, okay? So um, I'll take it apart in a second and then I'll show you inside the controller so we can see if there is actually a, uh, an aerial up there or whether this is just a dummy. Okay, so just to finish off, to be as thorough as possible, we've taken the little transmitter apart and uh, we can see that this here, the actual aerial is just uh, sort of a decoy. So there is no external aerial. Now, you could probably modify this if you wanted to put your own sort of... Uh, antenna on it, you know, maybe like a 3 or a 5 dB uh, gain antenna. I'll maybe do a video in future um, to try and sort of find, I'm not going to take it apart too much, um, more than this here, I just wanted to see if this was a dummy antenna. Now, with the antenna being on the board, uh, from the video you can see I've taken the qu I've taken the, the aircraft out to about maybe 250 metres uh, before I had to turn it because I couldn't really see anymore. Um, so it does have at least 250 metres range, so here's our little uh, Here's our little antenna here, NT2. Um, so I don't want to take the board apart too much to see if there's an ANT1 on the far side of it. Um, but yeah, as it stands at the minute, the functionality is really good. The board's pretty clean. The solder is good quality. Um, the LCD screen's uh, good quality as well. I'm not going to take that off, but uh, there's a little connector runs from the board. But yeah, the solder's nice and shiny. Um, good clean solders. No uh, sort of ropey bits in the board. Overall, yeah, the board's in good condition. So inside the transmitter, even though this isn't a proper aerial, to be honest, for this money, you're not going to get a proper aerial. Um, but yeah, the range in this is excellent for, for the sort of money and for the fact that it's a little onboard antenna. Um, so yeah, I hope you liked the review. And uh, if I've missed anything and you want to know it, please leave me a wee message and uh, I'll try and uh, answer it uh, to the best of my ability. So thanks for watching and I hope this helped. Oh, sorry, I should say, this here is actually like an ABS type of plastic um, on the case. It's not um, it's not sort of uh, reinforced with like fiber or gas or anything as you wouldn't expect, but it is actually pretty well made. Uh, you can see sort of the tooling marks where it was injected in the mold. Hey there, welcome to another review by the Random Review Channel. So today's review is for this here little bad boy here, a Ghoul RC um, T6. <clears throat> so we're just up here in the middle of nowhere. Um, there's a, a right wee breeze, you can sort of see the grass moving. Um, this here is a controller, um, so I've already done the bench review, so this here is just a little flight test um, of this here little thing. Now it's quite a quite a small little quad. Um, the battery's in here in the battery compartment. Um, we'll just switch it on and we'll just see how it handles this bit of a breeze. So we're just going to do a bit of a range test, a bit of a wind test, and then uh, we'll see how it gets on. Um, yeah, and then we'll sort of conclude the review. So um, we'll switch it on here in the bottom. Okay, and we can see the flashing lights, so we'll set it down. There we go, a little patch. We'll switch on the receiver. Find it down to zero. And that's us bound. Actually, you know what, because of the grass, we'll do a hand launch here, I think. So we'll just hold it underneath. A little bit of throttle. And then let it go. And there we go. Okay. So it's struggling against the wind a bit. Um, the wind's blowing straight at me. Um, so, okay, so that's, I've just upped the rate slightly. And uh, we'll just let it come back a bit. 
and okay so that's the rates now at 100% so you can see now it can fight the wind a good lot good bit better um, it's possibly hard to see with this camera okay so there we go so we're flying about it's actually whenever it's at 100% um, while wow, the yaw rate is actually quite impressive on it uh, I'll just do a bit of yaw here while it's in front of me Whoa! <laughs> okay, the yaw is actually a bit sort of sporty. Um, I'll just try and bring it back down and show you that again. Okay, the one thing I would say is that really it doesn't take an awful lot of acceleration. Okay, so this is the yaw again. This is full yaw. Hold on, it's going in the wind. You can see when I let it go. Okay, so. Whoa! Ah! <laughs> we've crashed. There's no camera on this little craft, so um, it's just going to really be a range test. So we've switched it on. The battery's in here. This is the stock controller that comes with it. So we're just going to do a bit of a range test. You can see the sort of tree over there, and I'll add distances into the commentary. So we're just we're switched on. Um, it's quite breezy today, so we'll just put that down there. And uh, forgive me, my camera's in my head. So we switch it on to bind it. We hold up and down, it's now bound, and we'll just accelerate, okay, so I'll try and remember to keep my head straight, so uh, actually while we're at it, we'll just change the rates, so you can see here the rate says 100% um, because to try and handle the wind, so we'll take it out towards the tree and we'll see how we get on. Okay, so I can feel the wind straight away, um, it's sort of ahead of me and to the right, um, so, quite a small little uh, drone, or a little quadcopter, whatever you want to call it. Oh, oh, oh uh, it's really quite sporty. Um, it's quite breezy. Uh, this here is quite light. I, I don't, I'm not sure how much you can see in the camera, but uh, really quickly there, we made it out towards the tree. Um, but you can see, if I just bring the quad back, um, you can see how much it's moving in the wind. So, uh, that there is me now. If I just get it hovering, that's me off the stick. So you can see it's blowing quite a lot to the right. It's quite windy and it's not the trim because I checked the trim in my office. Um, but I'll just give you a little idea of the yaw rate when this here is at 100% okay. It's quite sporty um, so I wouldn't be surprised if I crash it okay. So this is the yaw rate at 100%. Okay, whoa. Alright, so I hit the water. Uh, I'll just climb what it's get Now, one reason why I'm not too fussed is because this little quadcopter is waterproof. Um, so we'll just plop it into the water, which is something you wouldn't usually do. And we'll just take off. And that's it. Absolutely fine. Bit of water dripping off the skids. But apart from that, pretty good. So what I would say was that 100% uh, wouldn't be for an absolute beginner. Um, you can see that it does tilt quite a lot. Uh, you could lose control, especially with the yaw, quite uh, quickly. But apart from that there, you know, um, I'll just bring it back. In, in a wind like this here, really it wouldn't handle uh, if you turned it down too much. So that's me coming back. And you can see there, it is pretty sporty. Uh, I would say it's very punchy. Um, I'll just bring it in and do a little bit of a punch here. Now it is windy, as I said, so here goes. Here's a little bit of a punch. There you go. Now that, that was a little punch uh, into the wind as well. So just bring it back down again. So another feature it has, which I haven't actually tried yet, is I think it does manual, or not manual flips, but it does automatic flips. So yep, there we go. Okay. So to do that function then, uh, this top button on the right hand side here, there, if you can see my hand, um, you push it and then it, it beeps. And then whichever direction you hit the stick, it does a flip. So for instance, if I wanted to flip left, uh, if I can just bring it in. If you wanted to flip left, we hold that button and then hit left and over it goes. And there we can see that that uh, performed a flip. So uh, we'll just do a range test here and I'll take it out as far as I can from here, pretty much until I lose control and hopefully it just drops. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't sort of take off. So we'll take it out and uh, See where it actually dies on me at if I can, and then I'll work it out the distance on sort of Google 
um, maps or Google Earth. Okay, so we're getting out there now towards the tree. Uh, we're still going strong. We're well past the tree. Still going strong. I'm actually losing sight of the drone. You know what? I'm actually going to just bring it back because uh, I was actually well past the tree there. Oh, I think my battery just died. Um, so yeah, I, I was. I would say there, I was sort of halfway between the tree and the houses behind there, and I sort of panicked a little bit and brought it back. And I think when I brought it back, my battery possibly died. It's a little 400 milliamp hour battery in this. Um, I found here you get maybe about five minutes, uh, five six minutes of flight time. Um, the battery connector is the type of connector that you can plug into the little mini connectors, so you get five batteries in to charge the little multi connectors. You can buy them for sort of a tenner, so it would be worthwhile buying sort of uh, one of them. And usually when you buy them, they come with five batteries, so uh, pretty good. Um, hopefully I can find this, because the grass is quite long, and we'll just, ah, here we are. And we'll just check to see if it was indeed the batteries. So yes, the batteries, you can see here, the batteries are blinking quite quickly. And I suspect if I try and take off with it, Well, it is flying, but uh, it is limited acceleration, so I don't want to run the battery down too much. Um, so we'll just do a wee bit of a spin. Yeah, that's the battery toast. Um, so, brilliant little quad for the, for the money. Um, the, the lower rate um, is very stable. Um, I would say that the lower rate in um, windy conditions, you're pretty much not going to be able to fight against the wind. So obviously you turn the rates up, we'll just switch it off. We turn the rates off and we'll switch off this. There we go. Um, once you turn the rates off, then, or up, sorry, towards the 75 and 100, obviously the battery is having to work harder. Um, so you're not going to get the same time out of it. Uh, brilliant little waterproof quad. Um, so you could take it out in the rain if it was rainy, but uh, no wind, you could take it out. And uh, if it plops into a puddle, it should be absolutely fine. So I hope you liked the second part of the review and thanks for watching.